Soren's text. The word becoming flesh and the light coming to dwell among us. That's the magic we are celebrating tonight. My parents, both are gone. They produced nine of us. Five boys and four girls. All are still alive. When they brought us into the world, the centrality of the family was the relationship, is still relationship. All nine of us are uniquely gifted and different. There are four teachers. There are spouses, are teachers as well. One pastor. But I have a younger brother who also went to seminary. And his wife also went to seminary and she works for the denomination. And then we had two soldiers, because dad was a soldier. So you see, our, our family is very unique, different, crazy. <laughs> my family, when we get together, all nine of us, or including mom and dad, 11 of us, we have five languages going on simultaneously. When we get together, we talk about movies we have seen or stories we have heard. There are some stories you can only say so beautifully in English. And there are other stories that you can only tell in Hindi. Because Hindi is a very rich language. And you can really package it so nicely. <laughs> and then there are some things you can say in a very humorous way in my tribal language, the song I sang. And then there is a very colloquial language, mix of Hindi, English, Nagamese, and whatever. <laughs> it's like a big bowl of salad. It's called Nagamese. <laughs> so we have four or five languages simultaneously going on without thinking. It just, it just goes, and nobody will ask anything. <laughs> but the beauty of the whole thing I talk to you about is the dynamic of the relationship. Right? It is that relationship connects us, holds us together, even though when we make one another terribly upset about any different things. But the relationship holds us together. All nine children were not saints. Some were notoriously gifted. But my parents never labeled good, bad, and worse. Good, bad, and ugly. Right? 
We were all their children. And when we were home, especially during Christmas, we were all just children and siblings having a wonderful time. Now I tell you the story to say that that in creation, the centrality of the beauty of creation is this divine relationship. Does it make sense? God did not created you and me and then said, go away. God wanted to keep all of us together. But you know, even the best of us, there's nine children my parents had, we are like this ten fingers, different sizes, does different things. But they all have to work together to be a family. Right? And so and so this is what you see in our in our readings tonight. You know. Somehow we were deceived. Sin came into the relationship between the divine and the humanity. Right? And there was this, this separation. But God did not throw you away, but God was always wooing. Oh, wooing is something that we don't talk about. Right? That's not even a vocabulary today. <laughs> But you all know, you know, some of you know darn well what wooing is. <laughs> right? Hey, I had to learn wooing after I came to this country. <laughs> but I do remember some of them older, older siblings when they eventually fell in love their boyfriends came to visit. And he would come and throw a little rock onto the corrugated tin roof. <laughs> Ting! And then he rolls. <laughs> and then we would say to our sister, I think he's out there. <laughs> Wooing. <laughs> right? Even in our separation, God did not throw us out, disown, but continue to woo us. Does it make sense? God was wooing us back to the relationship. God was in the business of mending relationships or restoring the brokenness. That is the power of first Christmas. Love came down. Mm -hmm. Love came down. Love is a powerful thing. Our lives have been spammed with all kinds of promises. I get spam call every day. Yeah. And sometime we fall prey to those spam calls. But God in Christ is saying, I have 
a more abundant life for you. Not the one you know, not the one you think you understand, but this love that I give to you will truly revolutionize your life. Yeah? And so God comes to us in a very unique way. Apostle Paul articulates so well in his letter to a young Christian community in Philippi. And so let me read to you a couple of verses. He says, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the human position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. That's a little different translation, but you got it, right? You know? Apostle Paul is saying, Christ emptied himself and took upon him the human form to bring God's love to us in a way that you and I can relate and understand. It is not just the sympathy of God, but there was some empathy attached to it. Does it make sense? Yeah. And that is what the power of first Christmas is. Love. Love yearning to reestablish relationship. Bringing again the divine and the humanity together. That is the crux of Christmas. And so, and so, scripture talks about love abides. Love cannot be monetized. Love is a verb and we have to give it away, right? Love has to be practiced, shared, to really enjoy the meaning and intensity of love. I kind of like this Christmas story. <laughs> you know. And love is not out there, but love comes to abide. Revelation 3.20 talks about, I stand at the door and knock. Right? If you open the door, I'm going to come in, and we will have supper together. Think about that. One day Jesus was coming through town. And Zacchaeus was a small guy. But he wanted to see Jesus. Somehow on the way, there is this sycamore tree. And he quickly climbed up to see Jesus. And Jesus came and said, Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house. Emmanuel is God with us, right? God comes to dwell. God is coming to be our friend. God is coming to abide with us. Mm, abiding. Very nice word. In the old understanding, 
Abiding is, is coming and dwelling together. It's almost like pitching a little tent here, and then, you know, we all go into that tent, and we have a good time. Right? You remember your camping days? You all crawl in, and then you tell some horror stories, <laughs> or scary stories, and you love, you know, laugh, and you share stuff, and then, you know, you don't want to go to sleep, you want to stay up all night. That is, that is abiding, right? God, in Christ, want to come down to abide with you and me. Think about that. It is abiding. Nobody's going to sleep in the garage. It is coming together. That is what the dynamic and the power of first Christmas is about. It is for you and me. Doesn't matter what the world say about you. Good, bad, different, that's okay. Nonetheless, I say, God still loves you. You are as precious as anything else. You are it. Mm -hmm. So, when you leave this place today, tonight, know that you are special. This Christmas is your Christmas. Besides all the other things that you see, it is about you. together. It is reestablishing, concretizing the relationship. Concretizing. Isn't that a nice word for English teacher? <laughs> yes. Concretizing. That's what it is. And so, siblings in Christ, enjoy. Enjoy.